Hey crafters, it's Janet with Crafting It Up In Creations. So glad you stopped by my channel. I'm so sorry, I have been MIA for about a month now. And it's not on purpose, just school has started. My oldest went off to JMU and I was sick last week. Um, just sinus infection and bronchitis, but oh my gosh, I have not felt that bad in a very long time. I even had to call into work. And I never call into work, ever. For being sick um i'm just very fortunate in that area especially taking care of sick people and people with flus and pneumonias and all that stuff that i just i'm very fortunate in that aspect i think i've been sick enough as in my younger years that maybe somebody says i need a break that's what i'm hoping elena has a project for school for the future farmers of america they wanted them to use the emblem on something they could they gave them some ideas of what different things they could do one was like create a mobile, like I guess that hangs down with the emblem hanging from it, or I'm trying to think what other ideas they gave her for doing this. I honestly can't remember, it's bad. So I was gonna use this silhouette and, you know, cut out all the different pieces and then have her piece them together and either she could have done a shirt i guess even on um heat vinyl transfer that's still a good idea but of course it can't be anything that you can profit off of the ffa actually has a website and i'll link that down below where you can pull these images from it and it does give you ideas of what you can do i think as long as it if it benefits like the promotion of the ffa like to your organization, like the school's division of it. I think that they allow you to use this symbol. Of course, we're not gonna be um, profiting off of this in any way, we're just using it and it does print out the little registration mark. We're just gonna be using this for the project for school, not to sell. So you have to print this in a mirror image you must have a toner printer. That's the only way this will work because we're gonna wood burn this. If you use a silhouette and you wanna do t-shirts, you have to do it in a mirror image as well. When you go to your print settings, you're just going to flip that. All right, so I ended up using the black and grayish one on a small little coaster piece. Still printed on the toner printer, still in a mirror image, and here it is kind of up close, and this is the one I'm gonna use on this smaller coaster here. You're gonna need your image printed in reverse. You're gonna need something to put it on. So I have a different, couple different things here. I have a couple different coasters. These I bought from Target last year. They're like a pressed board. They're really nice. Um, it's really, um, it's not thick, but it's very sturdy. Then these are just like little wood coasters. You can get them at any craft store. I think you can even get these at Walmart, but it's just, you know, piece of wood and then they also let me wait till I pick it up and then last year um, Target had these big plates charger plates and I had this in my stash and of course it's got a little tree at the top but I figured it wouldn't really matter but these were three dollars last year and I thought maybe I would actually try to put the image on that you also need the wood burning tool so this is actually gems, and this is the best one to use for this. It's got a lot of different tips to it. There's a little stand in here. And this one is actually Weller, and it's just called a wood burning kit. They even give you a few images in here to practice with. He, he mainly bought this because he makes these these intarsia pieces and I'll show a few of these at the end for you guys. It's um, several different wood pieces that he cuts out individually and then stains them in different colors and they're just beautiful. He doesn't sell them typically. Um, he has done some American flags in the past but he says it's no fun to replicate you know, 10 of those things or more at one time because it's very time consuming and you really don't get your money out of it selling it that way. Around here, nobody wants to pay um, 50 or $75 for something. Um, I don't know how it is anywhere else, but he originally made this 
so he could wood burn his signature on it and I don't want to put his name on there. He's not all about having his picture taken or anything so but that's kind of why he did that. There's a bunch of little different tips in here. Um, there's like this one. There's one that's kind of like a hot knife. There's that. This one's got lines. There's a few in here like this that is like a tip where you could write your name. Here's a smaller one that's like a chisel tip. I always have to remember where that camera really is. And then there's this one. That's it. <clears throat> but we're going to be using the bigger one because that's going to be the easiest one to transfer this stuff. I, I, once again, I can't find my painter's tape. So I figured we'll just use some of this cute washi tape. It'll give me a reason to use it. And it's got some cute little flamingos on there. And I got the wider tape just because, but you just need some type of low tack tape. So painter's tape, um, any type of masking tape that won't stick too much. And I'll show you what we're going to use that for here in a minute. I got a few tips and tricks for you on making this happen. I also have a light box, which you don't need at all. You just need to be able to put your image up onto a window and kind of trace around it with the pencil so that you know where to run your wood burning tool at. We're gonna kind of cut this image down some, but we don't wanna cut it too much because you wanna be able to flip the paper back and forth to see if your image is burning on there. Okay, so I ended up originally going to the FFA.org. I did pull images from that as well, but I ended up going back in and putting FFA emblem to color just because I wanted one that was strictly black and white. And, and then I didn't even end up using this, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to pull this image up. And then when you go to print it out, um, just like with any clip art, on your printer, you're gonna choose to mirror that image. Now here's the FFA.org. And it, as you can see, it has brand home, downloads, um, and this is the FFA Brand Center, and it shows their emblem. It's got a little download section, and you can pull all kinds of images from that as well, and that makes it really great. And for video purposes, I went ahead and pulled up this light box. This is actually a Cricut light box. I actually got this from Home Shopping Network on one of their recent craft day deals, but you can turn it on and you can adjust that light to bright, bright, and brightest and bright, even brighter, um, and it's really quite useful. I thought this would be really good using for weeding for um, different things that I'll use my silhouette for. So you're gonna wanna take a pencil and just outline the image as close as you can get it um, to the image itself and just go around and outline that picture. When you go to actually you know, burn this onto a piece of wood, you can't always exactly tell where your image is at. And this just makes that so much easier. This is quite a nifty little trick, actually. So I actually am going to do several. And I'm gonna trace several, because I'm not even sure at this point which one I'm gonna use or how many of these things I'm gonna make. And I wanted Elena to try this out as well, because, you know, this is her homework. And this one I kind of go back and go in just a little bit tighter in those areas so that I'm not, you know, taking the tool way out from that area that it should be. And like I said, I trace several. And eventually, this is the one I end up using is this little gray and black one. I would have loved to actually put this on the coaster as the black and white one, but I couldn't manipulate my image to be smaller with the, um, the color image. It used to be that I was really good with computer type stuff and I could just throw an image even in something as simple as Word and adjust the size, but for some reason I was having a, a lot of issues this day with that. I'm sure there are different ways to do it, even like through Adobe or anything like that where you could adjust the size of that image. And then I thought I might show this up 
close. This is just the Cricut um, light box. You can get it from Home Shopping Network. I really like it. Um, you do have to have it plugged into the wall. It has to be plugged into a wall. We did try to even um, plug it into one of those little um, fast chargers, but it won't work. So, But it's pretty cool. I really do like it. It's come in handy, and it'll be good for weeding. And then here's one of the charger plates from Target. And I'm going to cut one of the um, color images down a little bit and then place painter's tape or washi tape to the side of it and try to wood burn that image onto the charger plate. So I kind of line it up to where I think the middle is, and that's what kind of helps even outlining it on the back. I did end up finding my painter's tape, but I thought I would use the cute washi tape. But if I had to do it all over again, and I would suggest that you guys use the painter's tape. The washi, actually, this is some from Michael's, and it sticks really good, so it, that's kind of a problem. One other thing that I'll mention is I've done washi tape on the smaller piece that I'm going to make into an ornament and you really don't want that tape to be over top of the image where you're going to burn it. It doesn't really hurt the burning tool or anything but I end up having to kind of move that tape out of the way and it was just really annoying. So here is a clipboard from the Dollar Tree and I did the image on that. And you know, I only put the washi tape down on one side, that way you can flip the image back and forth to see if, whether or not that image is burning. So this tool is really hot, let me tell you. So don't touch the metal part at all. Now I rub and rub and rub, and as you can see, I kinda even scorch the paper on this. If you have like a little spare piece of wood, when you very first start, you may wanna touch it to the wood to take out that initial big draft of heat that's coming off of it. It didn't really hurt anything, it just scorched the paper. You can't tell on the other side, so it doesn't really matter. But I took a lot of video footage out for this, where I worked and worked and worked on trying to get this image to transfer over to this clipboard. And I'm only going to show you very little part of it, which still seems like forever. And it just barely even transfers. So I don't know if it's what this clipboard's made out of or if I just need to sit down when I have like a day or two to transfer this image. But I keep going over, going over, um, all these areas and it just does not seem like it transfers very well. So I don't suggest the clipboard. And as you can see, that image does not transfer whatsoever. So I'm gonna move on to the coaster. I'm gonna try to speed this up some because it just seems like it's kind of redundant. I go back over in this image and I flip it up just to see if that image is coming on there. Every now and again, the paper will stick. So your best bet is if it happens to do that, run back the, over that area with the heat tool and that'll kind of help release it. Somehow or another, the paper's still stuck in a couple places. So when I was all done, um, I took like a little damp cloth, very damp, and rubbed over it to kind of get that piece of paper that was kind of stuck to the ornament off. And there I am doing that now. And I decided I want a hole in it, but I ended up having to take this outside and get a real drill because that's just a little jewelry drill and it's not near big enough. But it does come in handy to help me put in the ribbon here in just a little bit. And I kind of go through all my ribbon and yarn and um, different things that I've picked up in the past. And I decided to, to use this Make It Christmas one. This was from Hobby Lobby last year. And I would venture to say that I got that on clearance. But it's real thin and it will fit through that hole. Now I kind of end up cutting this at an angle because I noticed that these little edges right there are not very good for trying to put it in there. So I cut it kind of like at an angle to where it's not just straight on going into it. And I fit both of these pieces in there. Kind of shove them in a little with that little screwdriver. And I just kind of work it and twist it until they come out on the other side. And then I'm going to kind of loop it back around 
to make it to where it will hang. And I kind of fidget with it a little to make it come out at the top. And Elena's favorite color is red, so this works out really well. She ended up making the exact same one um, and turned this in for the grade for school. And we're gonna tie that at the top, just a regular knot, and I'll cut off the excess on that. And then I'm gonna end up making a bow. So I double it up and I just make a regular bow. And then I'm gonna cut the ends off of that as well and hot glue it onto the ornaments. And just something really simple. But I thought it added just a little bit more to it with the bow. And the little pine cone pieces that I have in the background, I bought those years ago in a really big container at Michael's. And I used some of that spray snow on top of them to make them look like they have, that they're actually snow covered. And it looks really cool. Like the effect of it was really neat. I sprayed about half of them that were in that container. And every now and again, I'll just whip them out and use them for something else, you know, to add a little something to a project. Check out that spider web that's coming out from that hot glue gun. That's because I didn't um, let the thing heat up all the way, I believe. So I'm gonna add those pine cone pieces to the top. So I add a little bit of glue to the top of the ornament. And I'm gonna stick those on there. And it was just a little something extra to add. It was actually fine without it. But for whatever reason, I never know when to quit. So here's a look at the finished project. And I had to go to work, so Elena pretty much had to go back and do this on her own herself. But this is the one that I made, kind of testing it out just to make sure that everything would work okay. Um, you know, just kind of playing around with the and transferring the image and everything and wanting to make sure it worked. So that is this piece, and I'm going to show you what the charger ended up looking like as well. But that came out really nice. And you know, I once again went back and tried just a little bit longer and with a little more diligence to do the clipboard, but it just did not work. That thing just didn't really want to transfer. Some of it did, but most of it did not. The charger, on the other hand, turned out so much better. So, of course, you know, it's wood burning. It's not going to all completely go across there. Um, there are some little pieces of paper that are still stuck on there, as you can see, that I'll have to remove with a damp cloth. And I'm going to do that here in just a little bit. And this is kind of up close where you can kind of see where just the little bits of that paper came on. But just take a damp paper towel, just barely damp, and if you rub over the part where the towel is, then that will completely come off. And so I used a damp cloth to remove those pieces of paper that were kind of stuck to this. So the biggest thing is using the masking tape to kind of help you flip back and forth and using the pencil to kind of outline the image so that you can burn it on there. But you can use any kind of wood just about. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the um, comments down below. I'll try to get back to you guys on that. But this was just a quickie type project of, you know, for her to do a school project using that FFA emblem. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys are having a great week. Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate all your love and comments, and I hope you guys have a great day.